Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> My name is Ulf Linnemann. I would like to draw your attention to a section in Namibia that is the Swartpunt section. The section, this is uh, the mount on Farm Swartpunt, unnamed. The locals call him Mount Adyakra because uh, some of the first Adyakra fossils were discovered there. And we try to uh, um, set up their new uh, geochronological data and new field work. First, I would like to introduce to, uh, the co-authors to you. This is Maria oft uh, and Urs Schaldecker. They are responsible for the uh, high precision uranium lead dating. And we work together in the field with the um, team of Pat Vickers Rich uh, to the right. Left is Peter Trussler. Many of uh, you know him because he, um, he provided a lot of exciting pictures to the community, to the Ediacra workers. That is the Namibian example. And this is my team in Dresden. We have an ICPMS lab. We do normally detrital zircon, but uh, I put them in the field and we do the field work together, sampling and uh, zircon concentrate, screening and so on. Uh, you know all that number, 541. It comes from a drill hole in Oman, and it was published by Bowring et al., and it uses the disappearance of Claudina, and it uses also this base of a negative carbon uh, excursion. Uh, the section where we go now is in southern Namibia, and it lies on the Swartpunt farm that uh, is bounded to Wit Witpitz farm and also to Swartklove farm. The section is about here in that rock. And um, oh, oh. so now uh, I would like to give a brief overview about the previous work. This is Miss uh, Beverly Saylor in 1995. They, uh, she uh, has introduced uh, us into a, a marvelous field trip in that time in the uh, section. And she uh, um, uh, provided to work together with John Grotzinger a very nice profile there. The Swartpunt section is only the uppermost part. Uh, they have at the base an age of 533. And this was recalculated by Schmitz uh, to close to 541. And then another age that is upsection, uh, um, that is um, in the Cambrian, that is 593 plus minus 1. The speciality is the section has no transition into uh, the lower Cambrian um, because it is incised by uh, and channel during uh, the Precambrian Cambrian transition. Maybe we can demonstrate that we have the lower, lower, lower most Cambrian there in the section. This is, by the way, Andy Noll during that field trip, our uh, yesterday's keynote speaker, looking at a pteridemium at R. Uh, then a few years later, Marbonne published uh, the description of Swartpuntia. But a fossil, an, uh, a fossil that was found there and unnamed at that time. And uh, in 2005, Jensen and Ronegar uh, published uh, trace fossil, Streptichnus narbonne, that is only known from there. And it is very close to uh, Phycodus pedum, Streptichnus pedum. Later, uh, Rachel Wood uh, took field work there and she found uh, she found that in the topmost part of the section, in the top, uh, topmost part, part of the section occurs Namakalatos and Claudina above the level of the Ediacra fossils. And then uh, a team of um, um, Mark Laflamme and uh, Simon Daroch uh, studied the trace fossil level and they stressed uh, the fact that ecosystem engineers wiped out most probably the Ediacrans, at least in that section. The new documentation of the section I did with Andy Gärtner, one of our doctoral students. And I would like to draw your attention now to the new field results. We can um, divide the section in several uh, units from A to F. And uh, let's uh, shortly 
uh, briefly go through the section. So you have here the units and I will show you some, um, some um, um, aspects of the section now before we go to the radiometric data. In principle, at the base you have ashes, then have you have soft bodies at the Akaran, biota, and then you have a transition interval, and then you have Cambrian-type trace fossils. Uh, in the base of Unit A, you have green shales and some limestones, and one uh, fragment of Swartpuntia was found during the field campaign. In Unit B, in Unit B, oh, it is a little bit fast here. In Unit B, uh, you have gray laminated mi microites and black microites. They form a slope and you have the ash number one. In uh, Unit, uh, um, in, sorry, the previous one was Unit R. Now we are in Unit B, you have thin bedded um, black, mi black microite that forms the cliff number one. If you go further up section, you have ashes number two, three, and four, and you have a uh, thick bedded limestone succession. Here, one is a remarkable bed uh, named from Rachel Wood Leopard Limestone. Then, in that uh, succession in unit C, you have ash number five. And then comes a siliciclastic unit uh, with Swartpuntia and with a, a tempest tide bed with hammer cross stratification and this, which is embedded in siliciclastic mudstone and shale. In the um, section of this uh, unit D with, where the soft bodied adiacrans occur, you have also load casts and you have tool marks, most probably um, caused by uh, drifting Swartpuntia. And all in all, these tool marks and these um, uh, hammocky cross stratification points to a shallowing during the sedimentation. Uh, so we are in that uh, particular unit on a, a storm-dominated shelf. Oh, it doesn't want to go further. Oh. The pteridinium occurs in the lowermost part of this siliciclastic unit. And uh, if you go a few meters up, 21 meters up, you have to uh, level with the trace fossils with Streptichnus narboni, uh, with, which is uh, pictured here. It is a very complex fossil. Uh, with, it forms tubes. It forms phycodos-like um, structures. And it, is, uh, it has a, sen a center from which burrows go uh, radial to each direction. Then uh, what Rachel Wood told in that paper in the Precambrian research in 2015, we found also the Namakalatus and the Claudina at the top of the section. Now let's go to the ages. The ages are here, ash number one has an age of uh, 540 uh, plus minus 0.09. Ash 3 has an age of 509 uh, plus minus 0.14. And ash number 4 has an age of 539 plus minus 0.17. And ash number 5, uh, an age of 538 plus minus 0.2. Uh, the interpretation and the consequences. Um, if you look to the section, we have first the, the occurrence of some Edia soft bodied Ediacaran fragments. Then you have a series of ashes. The oldest ash is 540 plus minus 0.9. Then uh, you have an succession of limestones. You have ash number two that was not dated at the moment uh, when, when I uh, mounted together the presentation, but it's ready now. Then ash number three, it's 539. Ash number four, also 539. And ash number five, just below the level of the soft-bodied Ediacaran fossils, is 538. So that means uh, 538 is an age that occurs before Ediacaran fossils die out. We, if you zoom a little bit closer, 
you have now the fact that we have this rel relatively young age, then you have the occurrence of Swartpuntia and of Pteridinium, then you have a transition interval with no uh, macro fossils, uh, at least we found nothing, and nobody before us also not, and transition interval, that is interval number E, and then you have the occurrence of uh, Streptichnus, Narboni, and other complex uh, trace fossil taxa, which means in this transition interval, the soft bodied Ediacara fossils, uh, Ediacara biota, had become wiped out completely and been replaced by this community. On the other hand, the skeleton, uh, the, uh, the Ediacara fossils with an exoskeleton like Claudina and Namakalatus made it through. These, um, through this transition interval. So uh, yesterday I met these young Indian ladies on poster number 21 uh, and they dem could demonstrate that Streptichnus uh, uh, occurs in the same sedimentary unit as uh, Streptichnus pedum in the, in the higher Himalayas in uh, the Kunsamla formation quite close to the base of the Cambrian. So at the moment, for the moment, uh, we could assume that Streptichnus narboni and uh, Streptichnus pedum could occur very close. Also, we have that not in that section. We have only Streptichnus narboni. Uh, some are wrap up the entire thing. The youngest age we found in the section is this age. 580, uh, 38 plus minus 0.2. The Swartpuntia made, is, made it over the, uh, the ash and Pterodinium also survived, but both became wiped out in the transition interval of interval E in the section. Claudina made it through the transition interval. Namakalitis made it through the transition interval. And then uh, you have the occurrence of Streptichnus narboni. Consequently, at least in this section, we have to move up the Precambrian Cambrian boundary, the numerical age, uh, with this number. Um, you can also play a little bit with the data because you can calculate with that uh, high precision uranium lead data also the sedimentation rate for the carbonates which is more or less 30, 30, uh, 33 meters per one million year. And the duration of this transition interval, it's 21 meter, it's 0.64 million years. So that means Swartpuntia and Pteridinium became wiped out during that uh, interval here, during uh, 600,000 uh, years. And uh, radiation of this modern uh, um, trace fossil occurred after 600,000 years. So it is quite good possibility to calibrate the speed of evolution in that uh, section. And if you uh, uh, play a little bit with the data, you came out with that number, 538, that is a model age because it, uh, it is not measured and it is um, uh, estimated from sedimentation rate. So all in all, you have that picture at that particular section. So the discussion is now uh, if we should think about to replace this number by uh, the stratigraphic number by that number. The Chinese colleague just before me proposed the same. Uh, the question is with these uh, high precision uranium lead data, what you really measure and what criteria you, uh, um, you choose to draw the Precambrian Cambrian boundary. Is it a carbon anomaly? Is it biostratigraphic criteria? Uh, then the record of uh, biostratigraphic criteria from section to section differs. So it's also an it's a question of uh, how to make it practicable. I do not say that this number of bowing is wrong. They just have uh, another level. And um, um, I'm sure the colleagues um, in MIT have, um, 
have recalculated or measured it again and maybe it has the same uh, number. So it's just um, an agreement how you can transfer uh, the criteria of a pre-Cambrian Cambrian boundary together with uh, geochronological good data over the globe. Thank you very much. <laughs>